On Amazon's Today, we shall be looking at why Nigerian parents no longer speak their indigenous languages to their children. It is estimated that if nothing is done, half of 6,000 plus languages spoken today will disappear by the end of this century. With the disappearance of unwritten and undocumented languages, humanity will lose not only a cultural wealth, but also an important ancestral knowledge embedded in particular in indigenous languages. According to Wikipedia reports, the number of languages in Nigeria is estimated to be 521. This number includes 510 living languages with about 11 extinct. Welcome to the Amazons. Today we are discussing the death or extinction of indigenous languages in our schools. With me, Bimbo Dolapo. Extinction of indigenous language. That means the three main Nigerian languages are Igbo, Hausa, and Yoruba. And according to this report, these languages are facing the threat of extinction in Nigeria. That means to say that if we do not do anything about it now, uh, maybe in years to come, we will not have our own language except the spoken one, English, French, French, maybe Spanish, lately Chinese and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, I find that hard to believe. I no, don't some schools are already teaching Chinese in Lagos. Yes, because they are already teaching our children if, if how we to look speak at the trend of, Well, yeah, if you look at the trend of things, the next world power should be China. Language fosters unity. Unity means oneness. With a language, you can rule the world. Don't forget that here we have so many languages everywhere. I mean, what? We we're talking about 521 languages yes. in Nigeria. And I have you know, yes, in schools, when I was in primary school, yes, I did. I did Yoruba. Uh, I went to Maryland Convent Private School and Yoruba was compulsory and I did do Yoruba in school. But the thing is, we also have Lagos, Abuja, Potakot, do not Nigeria make. Nigeria is a huge place with so many other states. And if you go to places like Ibadan, you go to Kano, you go to Enugu, it is there. It is being taught in schools. It is actually the language that is spoken predominantly in those areas. Mm. But you know, uh, it, it, the, the Hausa man, the Hausa home, they do not speak any other language to their children but the Hausa language. If you come to the Southwest, the Yoruba man would probably not even speak the Yoruba language to the children at home. That is left for the grandparents when the grandparents live with the family. The Igbo man also speaks Igbo they do. to the children. Yeah. We're talking the three major languages in Nigeria. And if we do not speak it to our children at home, the school is left um, with the responsibility of teaching the children the language. There's so much more than the, that, that, that the school can do. The formative years is actually when you learn, when you pick up okay, a language. Yeah, you can pick up any language as a child. Very Even fast. modern two, modern yeah. three, modern four. Um, I was actually looking at it from the point of view that um, is the Nigerian language actually been extincted in Nigerian schools or is it the fact that some private schools where you pay a lot of money to send your kids to school actually don't include it in their syllabus because they don't see a reason for it because most of those kids are probably being prepared to go abroad to school? It, they have it as subjects in schools. Yeah. They, they teach it in schools but the school is passing the blame to the parents saying that at the time they come to school they've gone past that stage where they can easily pick up, you know, pick up languages. And where they show interest, the parents are the ones who are not willing for the children to learn the language. For the same reason that we are discussing here, that of what use will this language be to my daughter, to my son, when the outside wall is going towards you know, a certain direction, 
you know, it's no longer, it's not even French anymore, it's not English. People are looking to China, to Japan, to as the new world, as a new superpower. So that is the language the people, the parents want their children to learn. And we are but saying you, that is not... It, I, I want to come on to that in the sense that, okay, we as Nigerian, you know, when we go to school, we actually speak, we speak the Queen's English. If you speak to a normal or, 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 or typical Englishman, some of them can't speak the kind of English we speak because it's their language and because it's, it's what they were spoken to at home. So we go to schools here to actually study English and that's why we're able to speak the Queen's English. They don't speak, most of them on the street don't speak the Queen's English. And I know for a fact that in a lot of the schools that I, that I mentioned before, they don't teach this language. It, apart from the fact that the parents actually do not you know, maybe they don't speak it to the children or something, but it's not something that they do. But in schools, maybe in local schools and everything, Yoruba, they teach it. Maybe Igbo and Hausa, I don't know, but it's not dying in schools. I think it's more a case of, in a lot of the schools that where you pay a lot of money, they don't see it as being necessary. They're more focused on you getting a profession and being able to, to you, you know, know accomplish so, that. But, I mean, let's be serious. Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, they are part of the syllabus. They are part of the, you know, uh, Nigerian educational curriculum, basically. What I think is happening is the fact that you don't need Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, or any other language to get a job. First and foremost, our lingua franca is English. Mm -hmm. And I think those that, uh, the responsibility falls on the parents to teach their children their language. An Englishman will speak English to his child, a Yoruba man should speak Yoruba to his child. Then when the child goes out, the child can learn other languages that can help to enlighten him and prepare him for what he's going to do later on in life. Your child but is doing Yoruba. What is he going to use Yoruba for, for later for communication. in life? For Communi communication within the Yoruba uh, setting, for communication is, within Nigeria, le, for le, communication me, even outside of Nigeria. Look at it we have way. learned about I some Yoruba. students. I Limbo. don't read, no. We, we have learned about think. some Americans who are studying the Yoruba language at the University of Ibadan. Yeah. What are they going to use the Yoruba language for? You want to be a teacher. So it depends on your child's, you know, what the child wants to do in future that you prepare the child for. If your child wants to be a doctor, you're not going to insist on the child learning Yoruba or taking Yoruba. It's not important. But as an educator, it is. No, so it, it, it depends. It is, it is important from, you know, I'll explain why it is important. I have a child at home. He goes out, he learns how to speak the English language. He speaks English language to his friends. He does not understand my own language. I cannot communicate with my child in my own language. Then I lose my identity. I lose my roots because that primarily it is a solid base for the roots and the, um, the, the, the nursery of a child. It falls back on the parents. It does. It's, it's your fault. It, you know, your child if you, if you don't speak, speak your, language your language to your child, then your child is not going to be able but to speak the language. In the, in, if we're looking at the educational sector, what they're supposed to prepare your child for is to have those, take those subjects that he or she needs towards their profession in life. And that starts from your secondary school, which is why in, when I was in school, it was class three. So forgive me, I think it's SS. JSS3 or yeah, SS, I'm not it. sure which is which, but you now pick the, you know, the subjects that you want. It's either you're an art student or you're a science student. There's nothing like a Yoruba student or an Igbo student. But you, you no, want what, to be a, an artist like me, you're an art student. Yeah, what, what, they, what they have in schools now is um, you have the sciences, you have the arts, mm -hmm. but then you also have the electives. Some of them are compulsory, mm -hmm. like these languages we're talking about. You're watching Amazons, and we're looking at the extinction of our indigenous languages in our schools. We'll be back after the break. If you don't know a language, you don't know it. And many of these parents, you know, they live abroad and they want their children to interact with the language. Welcome back to the Amazons. We are still talking the near extinction of Nigeria's indigenous languages in our schools. Joining us on this discussion are two teachers from Atlantic Hall here in Lagos, Ekwe, Southwest Nigeria. Please welcome Chukura Gloria and Akinjobi Ayodile. Welcome. 
Yes. We, we, we have been talking about the near extinction of our indigenous languages in our schools. I mean, we say the, our language is our culture, our language is our identity. What is the challenge that you face as a teacher? I'll start with you, Akinjobi as a teacher of Yoruba language in Atlantic Hall in Ekwe. By the way, how many students do you have taking the Yoruba language in, in your class? Well, well, as a matter of policy in Atlantic Hall, it is compulsory. Every student in the school must have, offer either Igbo or Yoruba language. So all the students in the school are offering the language. Okay, but if, if you say they must op offer either of the two, okay. how many students do you have in your class? Say for example, SS3, how many of your students are going to take Yoruba in NECO? How many of them are going to register for Yoruba? They were in... all registered for the languages at SSE. Okay, uh, is, is that the same for you, Gloria? That's the same. Okay, so when you teach the language in class, how do, how do the students respond? How do they respond? I did, I, do they find, the subject interesting, or you have, to, you have to force them to learn it? Well, the background has been very, very weak. And as a result, even it will be difficult for us to blame the students, the interest will not be there. With the present situations in schools, the interest will not be there. But uh, the schools, our school in, in particular, we make all effort to make sure that the students, they enjoy the, so, uh, the learning of the subject in the class. I come back to you, Gloria. You teach Igbo language yes. in Atlantic Hall. Yes. In your class, um, uh, what is the response of the parents? Because I know that some parents never speak the language to their children mm -hmm. at home, and even those who offer it in school um, will be told that I did not send my, my child to school to learn how to speak Yoruba, mm -hmm. to learn how to speak Igbo. What is your own experience? The experience I've been having so far has been positive in the sense that many parents brought their children to Atlantic or just because they do Nigerian languages. That's basic. Because in Atlantic or we have more of international students, those that came from outside Nigeria. And many of these parents, you know, they live abroad and they want their children to interact with the language. That's the more reason why they brought many of them. Not that we don't have some that don't like their children speaking the language as a result of one thing or the other because they say that it will spoil their, um, their accent. accent and things like that. But That's so the Igbo far, language will affect the, um, the Western accent, the uh, English accent exact, of the exa child. Exactly, mm. but just few of them. Okay. But majority encourage us to you know, teach their children the language. Okay, but, but, but I, I, I'm, I'm interested in the students now. You know, uh, if you say that it is compulsory for them to learn the indigenous languages, so they learn it out of compulsion, not out of the interest they have for the language. Is, I, I, am, I, am I correct? Yeah, I, I can get you. Um, according to the National Policy of Education, it is compulsory for all students to do the exam at the SSE level. And even in YX syllabus, uh, YX uh, regulation, mm. it is compulsory that a child must, register, must be registered for the language before their result can be released. Welcome back. I went to a typical Nigerian school to find out if the Nigerian indigenous languages are a part of the school curriculum. David, I be the law, Mumaguma Gordinala, and Kunufuna Bojia. What was one old boy chunkers or Unna boy? Mana, I'm Biddle or Mumu Agumago. Na Izuka Galaga. I was sinner, Agumago boo. O Mumundia was sinner can nana your chin. Well, Luanyaka, Kenny Hemku. Na has sinner can nana your chin. Where Maggini, well, Luanyaka, Nagumago Bogini. 
omumu sina aka nna nna anyoche we megini we lu anyaka eke aguma god nala uzone ato nke mbubu nke abuabu nke ozobu akuko ngwakwo nzogbu 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 na ekusi no nzogbu onwo oke azogbu la nwanyi na nwanyi amaka na nwoka ajoka nzogbu 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 nke abotu i'm going to ask you the teacher what level of interest did do students demonstrate in class when you're speaking i mean when you're teaching the language for the students I have here I can say 90% interest they have the interests and they're willing to learn okay have you ever had an experience where a parent had come up to you to say I don't want you teaching my child the Igbo language in school not at all but the cooperation I would say it's not there even from the parents but they don't come up to tell us that we should not teach them but there is a way you can you know, motivate a child to go into learning a particular subject. Because sometimes when they are doing well in Igbo language, some of the parents might tell them that, why are you doing, why, why is it Igbo, why not go, to, why not do better in other subjects and not Igbo, you know, that is killing the interest of the, of the children. And at home they don't speak it to them. They feel that it is it is just our language they have to they will learn it mm. and when you notice that some of these children they are not they don't even know how to speak it they are just struggling to do that from what stage do you start uh, you know enforcing or trying to make the children take Igbo as a language from just one as soon as they are in this school because it's a compulsory subject somehow so from just one they should start learning it and whoever that cares can start speaking it and not really cares because you know if you don't know a language you don't know it but on our own side we try to teach them do you understand so from just one they should start learning it and they should start speaking it and there is no especially when you are in the class because this is an international setting so you don't just it's not every student in this school that can speak and do understand Igbo. but whenever we are in the class we do communicate and Thank you so very much. I, I must commend them, um, your work, and to the students. Thank you so much. Just keep up the interest and make sure you communicate to one another in Igbo language. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>
where we have been talking with the students and teachers about including our indigenous languages in their school curriculum. Unfortunately, while we were in the school, we ran into a parent who is also interested in the topic we are discussing, Azumi Yusuf. Madam, so tell us, why are you in Rainbow College today? I brought a child to do a common entrance exam for the JS1 student coming in. Okay, so is this your first time of coming to Rainbow College? No, I have a child that graduated from this school also. What language do you speak to your children at home? Uh, from beginning I speak my dialect first, that is Hausa. But later on, uh, when the last child didn't pick, we have to go on with the English. Okay, so your first language at home will be English or Hausa? Hausa. You say your two older children speak the Hausa language. Why is your last one, your daughter, not interested in speaking the language? Uh, it's because uh, the first two ones that I have, uh, we have a Hausa I met, where even if I'm going to work, after speaking Hausa for her, then the second one has issue of bringing a lady that doesn't understand our language completely. And I used to leave her at home, and she speak English fluently to her, that's the cause. But as parents, um, your child's um, dad, you and her older brothers, do you make the effort to insist and you know speak the language to her in order to encourage her to also speak the language? Yes, we make uh, we make an effort uh, to make her. But most of the time, the two of my children they are not here, so I go to work. My husband also goes to work. That's the cause from the beginning. So I think if, even if we speak to her when we are out, they will still speak English to her. But right now, do you still speak the language, the, you know, the Hausa language? Uh, is it your first choice of language in your house, or it, is it English? No, it's Hausa is my first choice of English uh, language at home. But my uh, my other middle daughter doesn't like uh, speaking uh, Hausa because she's fond of speaking English, so to say. Do you think that the school has a role to play in in helping our children? to learn how to speak our indigenous languages? Yes, the school has a role and both the parents also has a role. From the beginning is the parents, then in the school they has a role to play by introducing, introducing most of the Nigerian languages into all the school curricula. If I may ask you, what do you think about parents who do not speak uh, our indigenous languages to their children at home in you know as a way of communication uh, that's a big mistake because a uh, time will come when we need to speak a secret with your child and you can't find a way to speak to her so you have to speak to it in english where everybody will listen to what you are saying which is wrong okay so as a nation as nigeria do you think we have a responsibility to pass on our local languages to our children and for our children also to pass on to their own uh, the next generation Ah, uh, we have to do that. Otherwise, our tribes and languages will lost on the way. When others, uh, when people are introducing their own uh, languages into our school, we should be the first to introduce our own into the school so that our language will not be lost. Thank you very much. Hello, my little sweetheart. What's your name? Nadia. Sula. Nadia. How old are you? I'm ten this year. You're ten this year. That's good. What what, what school do you attend now? Um, now. Rainbow College now. Okay, Nadia, we are looking about and talking about um, speaking your language at home. Do you speak Hausa at home? Sometimes. Sometimes. Why don't you speak Hausa all the time at home? Well, I live with some English people and my mom always goes to work with my dad. Okay, so the people you live with only speak English to you. What about your mom and dad? What language do they speak to you? They speak how to me, sometimes English. Okay, but would you want, would you want to learn how to speak Hausa? Yes. Do you like speaking Hausa? Yeah. What about your friends? What language do you speak to one another? They speak English. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. And your friends are also Hausas? No. Some of them are Yorubas, some of them are Igbos, but mainly you speak, you speak uh, in English. Okay, but your friends too, do they speak their language? Do you know if they speak their language at all? No. No, they don't. So you all speak English? Okay, I'll, I'll have to tell mommy and your daddy that you must speak 
house at home. Would that be fine? Would you like that? Okay, if you come to Rainbow College, if the school wants to teach Hausa, would you, would you attend the class? Yeah. You will want to learn to speak Hausa if they teach it in school? Okay? All right. Thank you so much, Nadia. It's nice speaking with you. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. What's your name? Um, my name is Nazif Fisuf. Nazif, how old are you? I'm 18 years old. Now, today we are, we are looking, we're talking just to youths, you know, like yourself, yeah. uh, about uh, speaking uh, a local dialect, a local language. Um, do, do you speak your language at all? Yes, yes, I do. What part of Nigeria are you from? I'm from um, Katsina. Katsina. So mm -hmm. it means that you will be speaking Hausa? Yes. Do you speak Hausa fluently? Yes, I do. Okay, can you say something to me in Hausa, like, oh, I'm Nazif, I'm... I'm X, one, Z, yes, old. Well, yeah, I can. Okay. Can you Sunana, Nazif, Yusuf. Um, well, <laughs> that's about <laughs> it. So you really don't speak it fluently? If I well, can. I do, but, you know, there's nothing actually to say, so. Well, I've, I've just told you what to say to me now. Well, I'm, you I'm said Nazif, I should say. I'm here. For what purpose are you in there? Okay. Um, Sunana, Nazif, Nazu, examining Sistana. At the back of my mind, I bleed for Nigeria. Nigeria used to be one happy family. You would not believe that I speak Igbo. You heard me speak it a while ago. I did not learn Igbo in the east. I picked Igbo up in the north. Let's find out from parents why they no longer speak languages to their children. One of the reasons among many is because uh, our parents, so to speak, uh, they don't actually value our education here. They send, you know, uh, their children outside the shores of this country. And, you know, there, you just speak English language or whatever language they speak there. And when they return, now, the parents look at them as, if, as people that have achieved and wouldn't want them to learn their ind indigenous uh, language, which is very, very important. I'll, I'll put it down to two issues. One, my wife is not... Um uh, from Isako, and uh, so the children are struggling with cultural conflict, as it were, trying to, who, what do we speak in the house? We have to speak English in the house because my wife doesn't understand Isako, and I do not understand Yoruba. Guess that we have to go back to make them believe that um, our language, you know, is part of our culture, is part of who we are and then uh, that the English language is not superior to us. We have to let them know that. And this has to do with the kind of schools you have nowadays. If you go to some of these schools, they, they're not reading Nigerian literature. The rhymes and all that is either London Bridge is falling down or something. They're not talking about the market, they're not talking about Wissel Market and things like that. And then the, what kind of literature do you have for children now? It's all foreign. Tell me, um, I'm not feeling very fine. How do you say it in your language? <laughs> Do you understand your language? Not all. This is their father. He explains why it's difficult to make the children speak his language. Now, first of all, you discover that these children spend most of their time in school. Like my children, they wakes up in the morning as early as 7 a.m. They are off to school and they will not return back home till about 6 p.m. So they spend all the day with the teacher who speaks English to them. So they have no forum there to communicate in their language. And once they are back from school, they take their dinner and they go to bed. The following day, the same thing. So when would they have the time to spend with their parents to speak their language? Experts say a people who lose their language will lose their culture. And when they lose their culture, their identity will disappear. Well, we want to hear from a parent's perspective. How do the parents deal with their children speaking our traditional language in the home? And to talk with our guest today is incidentally a linguist. He is also a very, very senior broadcaster in Nigeria. I call him my Edmond sometimes, but he is BC or Latilo. speak three 
major Nigerian languages, Igbo, Hausa, and Yoruba. How did that come about? How did you get to learn these three and speak them so fluently? How? If I get my novel, come. Oh, I don't want to know. I can't know why you're queer. Um, Kali Boga, Makana, I know Gabrose, Kame, Kabu, and Kenke. Ibu, are you answering the question in the book? I'm coming back to you. Ibu, name your mom, Kekunum. Not a question. On Agawa, get a cake, I know. Hey, I'm not a Okay, these three major Nigerian languages and speak them so fluently. Uh, well, I'll uh, thank God for that. I grew up in Kano. Uh, actually, I'll be, I might be sounding like a broken record. Mm. said it over and over again. But each time I say this, at the back of my mind, I bleed for Nigeria. Nigeria used to be one happy family. You would not believe that I speak Igbo. You heard me speak it a while ago. I did not learn Igbo in the East. I picked Igbo up in the north. And the very first language I spoke when I was born in 1953, from 53 to 67, when I left Kano, the only language I spoke was Igbo and Hausa. Or the languages I spoke were Igbo and Hausa. My Yoruba language, I had to come to the west at the insistence of my father, God bless you so, that if you get closer to your language, you get to know a lot about my language. My Yoruba language is so good, I'm happy to say this. As I say, as a Timbaso, you bad motu mumany you bad mini. Okay now, uh this is you your children, have you have you encouraged them to also pick up our traditional languages, you know, you know, I know they are Yorubas, but which other dialects or language in Yoruba do they speak? I was eavesdropping to a discussion with this uh, wonderful uh, teacher here, and they almost have given up because interest has waned. Nobody wants to speak. It's like you're, you're degrading them if you ask them to speak, you know, their vernacular and all that. And it's so unfortunate. But what I've been telling my children, it's been a running battle between, you know, amongst all of us. It's not been easy at all. I have a problem there. I must be honest with you. What I'm going to do is match make them. One of my children, maybe you know, the girl gets married to uh, a boy from the east, cross and so on, cross cultural marriage. Okay, uh, so if, if you have a problem as a parent, how do we help the teachers? You, you've just said that um, it's a compulsion for the students to in learn the, in the schools, for the children to learn the language. And then if it's a compulsion, it must mm. mean that you have to dig deep. That is, you have to create ways in your teaching methods mm. of attracting them to want to commit to learning the language. So let us know uh, those things that you've had to create in order for the students to learn the languages that you teach, Igbo and Yoruba. Okay, I, uh, I want us to understand that uh, one of the reasons why the problem is so pronounced now is because of globalization. And a lot of our young ones, are, they, are, they are given to all these modern civilizations and all those technological, what technology, new uh, present technology brought. They are given to cartoon, going to cartoon network, they are given to oh. using computer and all those things. And if you really want to catch them, you must use all those means. And that is what we are doing in Atlantic Hall. The school uh, has really tried in equipping the school with a lot of uh, ICT uh, equipment. For we teaching have, uh, the language. We have smart board in all the classes. And every teacher in Atlantic Hall is equipped with laptop. So as they are going to, the, to their classroom, they are using PowerPoint to project whatever they are teaching. So it's not a matter of teaching in abstracts. So the students are seeing what mm. you are talking about. Mm. We are talking of children that were brought up without the background at all. 
So okay. if you really want to catch them, then you must make them to see what you are. They have never been to the village. Okay, so we have some of some students of Atlantic Hall here in our midst, uh, Adania, uh, Olumide, Ngozi, and Elizabeth, they are here. Olumide and um, Adania. Olumide, you speak Yoruba very well? Yes. Do you? Yes. So if I, if I have a conversation with you in Yoruba, now you can, you can respond to me? Yes. Okay, so um, I want to ask you in Yoruba, um, how do you, if I want to say, if you want to say to me, uh, it took us some time, or the, the, if you want to tell me that uh, you got here today at 12 noon, how would you say that to me in Yoruba? Modebi by Lago Mejila. You have to put Adania to the test of <laughs> speaking in Igbo. Um, kere Adani ke ba ono. Ino ni didi ino na azu ino na ake ba ino ra ke nuri. O ngi mani ya. O ngi wa ji go. Eh. Kodo giru te ba kita si ani Igbo. Ai bata uba nele kere Irina abo. Irina abo. Ko ni ya. back to you, um, Gloria. If you had students who took um, Igbo as SS, SSC exams and NECO exams, what was the success rate? 2010, we made 100% in Igbo. And that's because we use all methods we can to teach them. Sometimes we make it look very real to them. Sometimes we have to follow them to the hostel and watch them speak that language. Like yesterday, I went to the hostel to talk to the two students that will be coming mm. with us. And as soon as they saw me in their hostel, they started speaking Igbo because I made it compulsory that don't discuss with Conversation. me. Conversation. So, you know, that by speaking it often, though their own is somehow adulterated, not like the way people in the East will speak it, but at least but they, they are making, okay. they can write it better than those that speak it. It's been, you know, it's been very revealing, quite revealing speaking with you today on, um, on this subject. Thank you so very much thank for you. being a part of the Amazons. Mr. Olatilo, I have to thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Okay, today. let me do this. Kapung akamala and sharing. Belima, I mukutang go there, a house and chick. Lakwa, a chicken, one and tarungwa. Babu, Babu, a house and chicken, one and tarung. About how so on the get a lot of bungalow and I can television not chemical a lot of bungalow inside the Kamu Dache Mumuku Baraba. Say tobacco when I know you go go to where. I do you, you are going to and Professor Niamh Binukwe or Mr. Kwaju. I do a lot of things from Nigeria. A team Ben Louis, I do a lot of things. Your Davi, the bank part of Nigeria. You are welcome back to the Amazons. We have really been enlightened by the teachers and the students. Um, we saw the students try to, to speak the Yoruba and the Igbo language. And then, uh, of course, the multilingual, the BC or Latin law. Um, I, didn't, I didn't get to, uh, although he, he interpreted the uh, Hausa language that he spoke to us here. But then how, how, does, how does one man learn to speak these three languages that we are discussing here so well and so fluently, and he didn't learn it in school. That's what he said. Because some people have a gift, the gift of languages. Some people pick up languages like that. Apart Sheng from Warenze, that, an oh, actor, he okay. speaks Yoruba, he speaks Igbo, he speaks Hausa, all these languages fluently, and he speaks his own language, Badagri. As well. Yes. You know, um, Maybe for people like that, you know, um, if, if, if your parents are diplomats or if your parents are people who work in different um, areas of um, Nigeria, it's very, very easy for you to pick up this language. I have a that girlfriend who speaks, yeah. she speaks Delta Hebo, she speaks Igbo, she speaks Bini, she speaks Hausa fluently. I mean, when I say she speaks, it's not even the normal Yoruba you speak on the streets, mm -hmm. but she actually speaks the real, and, you know, I was amazed, you know, and I asked her and she said, 
it because when our father was working with one of these um, large companies, he was being moved and from the age of like two till about when they were like 12 or 13, she had lived in like almost every part of Nigeria and she was able to pick up the language, which takes us back to where I said that, mm -hmm. you know, children actually, I, I don't think the problem is actually they, they don't let the, the, the school. Language in school, they learn it at home, they learn it yeah. from The first place to you learn know, your language is at home. Is at home, but when you go to school, then maybe you, you can, can be taught on how to write it. it. But to speak, it's just like English. Most people speak English, but you know, most of those people that speak English, tell them to write it, it becomes mm. a problem. But we write English and we understand English more because we actually go to school to actually learn English. But the, 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 the children who need the indigenous, who cannot speak it now, are those children perhaps who do not have neighbors, they live in a, uh, in a big house, they, they don't have neighbors, they, they are they, maybe the next thing closest to speaking indigenous language is either the grandparents or the nanny or the gardener or somebody or the driver or the cook. That's, you know, and that is not enough to teach a child this language. Uh, yeah. I think what it is is that some parents are worried that um, if their children start with their native language, their ethnic language, that it will affect their English and they will carry the natural accent of their ethnicity and uh, transfer it to English language, which does happen. You hear people saying, um, how are you? Instead of how are you, that's the Yoruba accent. It's a normal thing. And you hear the house of people say FIFO. Yes, FIFO instead of people. And the Igbos have their R, it becomes L, and L becomes R. So maybe because of that, people prefer their children to start with English so that there's no accent, you know, that will disturb you speaking it properly and understanding it properly before you now learn your language. But they leave it a bit too late to start teaching. That might be one of the reasons. Mm -hmm that this is happening. But for me, I don't think our language is going anywhere. It's going to be here forever and ever. <laughs> Hausa people do not play with that. They no, are, they with Hausa. They I, 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 think, I just world. think they we, as, we, we as parents, we just need to understand that you know what, you need to teach your children what you need to teach you your must. children. And if you can speak the language, please speak it to them, basically. Okay. They don't oh. realize the beauty in your language. It's, it's poetic. Just it's called, like, it, you don't, it's, it's just like you don't, the, the Igbo man will also tell you, you don't understand the beauty in, the, in Igbo language. Oh, no, I'm saying to the parents yeah. who have not taught their children, who are in Yoruba and have not taught their children Yoruba. Oh, also, don't seriously. forget, sometimes mm. it's because the father is Yoruba, the mother is evil. And then oh, the child which is, which is, is, the, case, is, which is the case in my it's case. It's an advantage to the child. Which, you know, which is the case in you know, my case isn't. where my mom is Igbo and my father is Yoruba and it was my grandmother that actually made me understand Yoruba. I, can't, I can understand Igbo when you speak it, but the things I can understand are things I picked up as a child maybe when I was being naughty, like I mentioned earlier on mm. and everything. So, and you can't, I, the only reason I'm able to do this is because I've heard my mom conversing with her sisters and she's probably said one or two things to me as well. So really, we have to, we have to ask our parents to speak the, the yeah. indigenous language for much those, more to the children are, at home yeah. than um, they expect the, the, the teachers to do in school. Yes. You know, and um, we need to just thank our guests who were here today, especially the children, uh, the students and teachers from Atlantic Hall Secondary School in Ekwe, Lagos, and also the teachers and students from Rainbow College, also here in Lagos. Thank you so much, Dolapo and Bimbo. It's been a great pleasure again <laughs> on another episode of Amazon. We must say goodbye now, and we'll see you another time. Bye-bye.